Let us see. <coughs> Just getting set up. Do 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 do. All right. What is up, ladies and germs? It's your boy, high and mighty. Um, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you guys are spending it either with your loved one or your most loved game. Um, actually, me and Brooke went to go see Deadpool earlier today, which was pretty awesome. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Um, anywho, I've got a little, quick little tutorial I want to do for you guys. So... We're going to do a swap out list for really strong, like legendary and some epic uh, minions and spells. So basically, it's kind of like a balling on a budget. I really want this legendary, but I don't have the dust for it, and I'm not going to have the dust for it anytime soon. What should I replace him with? It. What should I replace him with? I am here to tell you. All right, so we're going to go into the collection. And we are going to start off with Druid. Now all these cards you should be able to craft or find replacements for them. Obviously if you don't have an Ancient of War, you can throw in like the 8-8 Taunt, Iron Bark, whatever. You can you, you, you guys can figure that stuff out. Force of Nature is a little bit harder. Um, so for Force of Nature, it works too. You have to kind of look at what the card's function is and then how you are going to come close to replacing that function to make it still have good synergy in the deck. So Force of Nature, generally it helps you f um, burst your opponent with lethal. So you could add in like Arcane Golem, a Leroy Jenkins if you had it, or a Wolf Rider. It's cheaper, um, but all cards, all those cards are cheaper than this, so they should have no problem comboing with Savage Roar before turn 9 in order to find a lethal on your opponent. Um, also, if you're like, I really need Force of Nature, I have one Force of Nature, and I really need the second one for, you know, because I want to clear with it a lot, you can just throw in the uh, Starfall um, in its place. So, let's move on to Scenarius. Um, I actually don't have Scenarius. Let's see Scenarius. Here we go. There's Scenarius. Um, if you do not have Scenarius, um, you could put it in its place as Sunwalker. Uh, Sunwalker, we'll go to real quick. I'm not going to do this for every minion. Uh, I'm not going to do this for every minion at all, but just for this first one, we're do, we'll, put, we'll throw in a Sunwalker. Because it, it's got Taunt and Divine Shield, whereas, like, um, that's what's good about Scenarius, is he gives you a couple Divine Shields, which kind of works like a Taunt with Divine Shield, because two Taunts kind of works like a Taunt with Divine Shield, if you follow me a little bit. Um, and also, if you find that you like, oh man, I really, you know, scenarios would be cool so I could buff up my minions, well, you could just throw in Power of the Wild, the second Power of the Wild, or something like that. Um, Ancient of War, um, you could throw in um, just an extra Sludge Belcher, a Taz Dingo, a, uh, where is it at? The Iron Bark Protector. Um, yeah, so. Moving onward, if you are playing Hunter and you don't have High Main, craft High Main. Don't replace High Main, just craft it. You can throw Foul Reavers in instead of High Main, it works relatively similar. That's only if you have Foul Reavers, but if you're Hunter and you're like, I need High Main, you just gotta craft it. Like, it's 100 dust and you just gotta do it. Like, that's it. Um, Gorilla. Where's the next one? Acid Maw. Like, Acid Maw, you could, you could replace by, like, having, um, like, you could just throw in, like, Mexna or an Emperor Cobra or something, something that helps trade super efficiently. Because that's what Acid Maw does for 7 mana. But you can trade more efficiently for cheaper than 7 mana, so I wouldn't even recommend running it. Um, Gorilla. Uh, another I wouldn't recommend, but you could just throw a Garabashi Berserker in there. It's actually a really good replacement for it. Uh, it's cheaper, and it still gets good synergy, uh, good growth. It's got a lot of health, just like it. Um, so we sacrifice a little bit of stats, and we don't get quite as strong of an ability out of it. But, you know, Garabashi Berserker. Uh, King Crush, another card I wouldn't really run or craft. Um, but you could replace with like a Reckless Rocketeer or an Arcane Golem. Something, something with charge. Uh, something with a larger amount of charge. Alright. 
So let's move on um, to our mage. And let's say you don't have let's say you don't have ice blocks. Okay, um, you could throw in Bran plus a heal bot to heal for sixteen because that's like. You could run Reno, um, you could run an Ice Barrier, or you could run an Animated Armor. Now, Animated Armor isn't necessarily the best card. Um, it's a 4 mana 4-4, four, four. your hero can only take 1 damage at once. Um, it's a Soul Bond card, that's why you're not seeing it here. Um, but if it's played properly... That, that dog is like, killing me with this shit. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can hear it, so I'm done with it. Alright, where were we? Um, yeah, so if you play it, you could play it animated armor, and you could play it at the right time. You kind of hold it and, and play it at the right moment, and you can get a lot of value out of it. Um, Archmage Antonitis. So what's good about Antonitis is he has like infinite possibilities of draw, of, of drawing fireballs. Um, but usually it's only like the first or second one that actually kills your opponent. Uh, a lot of times you have some other form of burn in your hand. Um, so to replace Antonitis, we would put in um, a flat Pyroblast, maybe run uh, an extra Pyroblast, or, or run a Pyroblast, excuse me. Um, you could also throw in a Forgotten Torch. Um, it, it turns into a Fireball later. It's three mana for three damage, and it turns into a Fireball later. So throwing in a couple Forgotten Torches will kind of, you know, kind of find some of that synergy for you. <clears throat> you could also just be super meta and throw in a Gadgets on. Because if you throw it on Gadgets on and you throw down a bunch of cheap spells at the same time, the same way you would with Antonitis, odds are you're going to draw a Fireball or some other burn. So, Gadgets on. Uh, Ronin. If you don't have Ronin, um, actually Gadgets on or Forgotten Torch is another good one for that. So if you're missing these two, I would run some combo of Forgotten Torches, possibly a Gadgets on. Um, it is hard to replace these two, um, for sure. Um, Ronin, you could kind of throw in like a Flame Waker, but odds are you're going to be running Flame Waker anyway, so that doesn't really work. Um, let's move on. Uh, if you're playing Paladin and you're like, man, I really need Bolvar Four Dragon, I just play a Flesh Eating Ghoul. It's cheaper. Um, its stats aren't that much worse. For two mana less, you get two mana less in stats, which or three mana, three three points less in flat stats, which is you know kind of shit. But it grows as minions die, so it executes the same function. Uh, lay on hands, Holy Light. I mean, you don't get to draw three cards, but, you know, you restore a close amount of health, and it has, like, it's it's much, much cheaper uh, for only two mana. Mysterious Challenger. If you want a Mysterious Challenger, like, there's nothing else that, that's going to pull five secrets from your deck at once. Like, I'm sorry. It's just not. Like, there's nothing that's going to do that epic of a swing. Um, so, just, like, like kind of, like, Replacing Mysterious Challengers, like, LOL, like, you don't. Um, <coughs> Avenging Wrath, you could replace with um, a Pyromancer. Tyrion, you can replace with Sunwalker, you can replace with Avenging Wrath, or you can replace with um, even Murloc Knight. Now, you might be like, Murloc Knight, with a Tyrion, that makes no sense. Like, you follow me with the Sunwalker a little bit. But with Murloc Knight... Um, Tyrion, number one, has to be removed, silenced, or dealt with, or else he stomps out the game. And Murloc Knight, on a much smaller level, does the same thing. It demands removal or silence, um, or else it will be stomped out. And the little bonus about Murloc Knight is you get a little starting synergy when you play it. You hero power, you grow your board more, you get more damage that can be placed even after the minion dies. So it does make a little bit of sense. Moving on... Uh, let's say you're a priest and you were like, oh man, I really want to play Confused. So you just throw in a Crazed Alchemist. There you go. Shadow Bomber. Leopard Gnome. Um, so Shadow Form. I actually wouldn't play Shadow Form because as Priest you need to be able to transition back and forth between healing and doing damage. That's what Alchemy Soul Priest is so good. So Shadow Form is super meh, at least right now in the meta. Um, 
yeah, so let's let's move on to something else a little bit. All of these cards are like whatever. Uh, Vulgen, that's a good card. Um, you don't have Vulgen. You could play Shadow Madness, um, or you could play Holy Fire. Um, <clears throat> they're not great replacements. Uh, Shadow Madness, I think, is a little bit better because you generally trade two for one, and Vulgen kind of effectively trades two for one like all day. So it gets you the mechanism of what Vulgen does. Uh, yeah, yeah. Light Bomb, Holy Nova plus a Pyromancer. That's as close as you. It's like a miniature Light Bomb, you know. It kind of does what you want it to do. Um, it's hard to replace a second Light Bomb. A lot of decks run two Light Bombs now. Back in the day, it used to be a joke if you ran two Light Bombs. Back when I played Patron, and I would play Priest, and they would Light Bomb, and I would just like make more Patrons later, and they'd be like, your deck is so fucking cheesy, and I would just be like, like to be a dick, I would be like, why don't you just run two Light Bombs? Pleb. You know, but Light Bombs are actually pretty fucking good. Especially with Priest Minions, who have a lot less health or attack than health a lot of times. Anyway, um, you want to Cabal Shadow Priest, but you don't got it. Shadow Madness is your answer. At the lower level, Shadow Madness is your answer. That's it. Like, Dunsky. Um, Confessor, you would have to, like, like, Temple Enforcer maybe is a replacement for Confessor. Because for one less mana, you actually get better stats, and it grows, like, the synergy of your board. But it only, like, giving a minion plus three health is a far fucking cry from inspiring to summon a random legendary minion. Some legendary minions really suck ass, though, and you don't get good value out of it for the first turn, and the Confessor gets killed, and it was worthless, whereas the Temple Enforcer's value is guaranteed to go. Um, so, yeah. If you have Ysera, I would play Ysera instead, maybe even. Yeah. Prophet Valen, you just run a flash heal. What's what's weird about replacing Prophet Valen with such a cheap card is that flash heal can be used in you know, Valen is sometimes you like, oh man, I need this extra heal to live. Flash heal's got you covered. Alkanai Soul Priest in in t in tandem with uh zombie chows and a flash heal, like that's that's a flat you you know, for like eight mana you could deal like forty damage. Or not forty, wow. Uh twenty damage, excuse me. So, and that's just all in one turn, you know, you Alkanize Soul Priest for four, then you Zombie Chow, Zombie Chow for two more, putting you at six, and then you double Flash Heal um, their face, and then you Circle of Healing. So, it's, you know, and then you could also, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's a good, uh, Flash Heal is actually pretty good in Priest, believe it or not. Um, not bad as a replacement for Valen. Moving on to, you can't replace Preparation. Um... Like you can run, you can run a tomb pillager, and it'll give you a coin. But it's there's nothing like making a spell that costs three less. Like you could just get so much tempo out of it. So if you want to play rogue, you have to make preps. That's sorry for you. That's the price you gotta pay. Um, let's say for some like really weird reason you wanted to play a patient assassin right here. Um, I would just recommend playing uh, an emperor cobra, a pit snake. Mexna. If you're like, man, Patient Assassin's the best card in the game. Mexna's a giant Patient Assassin, so... Anyway. Um, and you can even run Stealth in your Rogue deck to make a Stealthed Mexna. Um, so if you wanted to run... Yeah, moving on. Um, to Edwin Van Cleef. I, I've always wanted Edwin Van Cleef. I just haven't... Uh, if you're going to craft a Legendary... Generally, you want to craft a neutral legendary, and then once you get all the neutral legendaries you want, you have to start crafting things like Jaraxxus, and then Tyrion, and then Archmage Antonitis, I think before Edwin Van Cleef. Personally, that's what I did. Um, so anyway, if you want to replace Edwin Van Cleef, you can actually just play a questing adventure. They cost the same amount of mana, and they do the same thing. Edwin Van Cleef is just a little stronger. Each card you play, um, for this turn you get 2-2. Two, two. The difference is, is that Edwin Van Cleef can ceiling out, right? Um, let's say you have 10 cards in hand, and some way you play all of those cards, and then you play Edwin Van Cleef, right? He becomes uh, a 20-20, because he gets 18-18 for each card played earlier this turn, right? 2-2 two, two for each card. So that's 9 times 2 is 18, so he becomes a 20-20, right? Whereas a Questing Adventurer, after playing all of those cards... Um, is only a, I think he starts off as a 2-2, so he's an 11-11. But, you know, he can continue to keep growing. 
Um, whereas like a lot of times MMA and Cleave, you just make him to a 6-6 six, six, and then you're done with him. Whereas like Questing, you can kind of boost him to a 4 to play around a Priest, you know, and then boost him to a 6 when you want to like maybe Dr. Boom later or something like that if you're running Dr. Boom in your Rogue. Anyway, Questing Adventures, like, not, it's not as good, but it, it's, it's almost as good. Like, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty damn good for, for what it does. Say you wanted to run Sabotage, um, you would just instead run Sharp Oil, because, uh, you can use either your minion or your weapon to clear their stuff, and then outpace them with your weapon, so it's kind of okay. Um, you're like, man, I really want to run this kidnapper because I love this terrible combo of returning a minion to its owner's hand. Um, where is it at? Uh, I don't know. I would just play, I'd even play a Boulder Fist Ogre before I would play this. Or fucking, yeah. A, a Shadow Pan Rider all day. Shadow Pan Rider's a great card at the lower levels, just FYI. Um,. Trade Prince, <laughs> Lore Walker. <laughs> uh, that one's just funny. And a Rubok, I would just run into Ruby and Egg. It's much, much, much cheaper. You do get a 4 4 into Ruby and out of that egg, so there you go. Uh, Elemental Destruction, run a Lightning, st run lightning Storm instead, um, or run a second Lightning Storm uh, with a Pyromancer, just something that gives you more board clear. Doomhammer, um, where are we at on the Doomhammer? Okay, Doomhammer, I would replace with, uh, let's see, where are we at? Sorry, I've got like all this shit written down, guys. Uh, like a Stormforge or a Dune Maul Shaman, this guy right here, I would replace that with that. Uh, Mist Caller, it's not a very good card, but Thunder Bluff Valiant, um, Stormwind Champion, or Every Fin is Awesome. Um, I think are pretty good replacements for that card. Neptalon, Colt Master. You don't get the Murlocs directly in your hand, but if you happen to be playing Shaman, Murloc Shaman, or Sherlock, you can trade away all those with a Colt Master and probably draw like four more Murlocs. So there you go. Um, Alec here, you would just craft a Doom Hammer, run a Dune Maul Shaman. Yeah, Doom Hammer with Rock Biter is like grosser than Alec here, so. Alec here is pretty out of the meta right now, unfortunately for him. All right, Dreadsteed, Piloted Shredder. I would I would just swap for a Piloted Shredder. Piloted Shredder is actually probably just better than a Dreadsteed. Uh, Dreadsteed does demand a silence, but it really doesn't do anything unless you also have the uh, Baron Rivendare on board, because just one just one 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 each turn isn't that huge of a deal. Bane of Doom. Um, you could run Soulfire. Doom Guard, or even a Stormpike Commando. Because if you look at Bane of Doom, you spend five, five mana to deal two damage to a character if it kills it, summon a random demon. So optimally, you're summoning a demon, right? For five mana, you deal two damage and summon a demon. Well, for five mana, you could just play a Stormpike Commando, deal two damage, and summon a 4 2 that's not a demon. But a 4 2 is not the end of the world. You know, Big Game Hunter is a pretty good card, even though it gets ass on the back end, but. You could just look at it as like, you're like, okay, I'm running Bane of Doom, but it's like a relatively crappy Bane of Doom. <clears throat> That's just going to shit out a 4-2 every time. At least you don't have to kill the character in order to summon the 4-2. It's a small bonus, I guess. Um, Wilfred Fizzlebang, Maiden of the Lake or Fencing Coach. Uh, pretty easy swap outs right there, I think. Uh, Twisting Nether. You would run an extra Shadow Flame or Hellfire in your deck, whatever your AOE was, run an extra one, maybe throw in a Pyromancer. I don't really like throwing in a Pyromancer at all on Warlock, but maybe that's what you do, You would do. Um, Malganus, you would run Bane of Doom, um, Demon Wrath, or even Demon Fire. Um, it just gives you Demon Synergy, whereas like also Bane of Doom can summon Malganus, so it's like Playing Bane of Doom is like you have a Malganus, but only like once out of every like 12 or 13 tries, you know, if that makes any sense. Um, Jaraxxus. So Jaraxxus is good because of his hero power, because of his ability to heal, um, and his ability to make 6-6s. Six Can't really replace this making 6-6s six for 2 mana. There's nothing that, that's like that, really. Um, 
at least for Warlock. So you could run Surf and Lee to get, try to get a better hero power to heal yourself in order to live. Um, you could run a Mistress of Pain, um, a Doom Guard, or a Siphon Soul. A lot of times you actually use Jaraxxus to kill your opponent. Like The weapon itself gives you the extra damage you need, especially when you're playing... Uh, handlock, it gets a lot of times really close. They'll be like super weak and just be like, wow, oh, Jaraxxus weapon kills him right now. So a Doom Guard does that effectively. You can just save it, you know, to like bail yourself out of a desperate situation, which is kind of what Jaraxxus is. Um, moving onward, Shield Slams. If you don't have Shield Slams, you can run Bashes. Um, if you don't have Brawl, I would recommend you run an extra Unstable Ghoul or an Abomination. They generally... Um, especially the Abomination, probably especially the Abomination here, because Abomination is generally going to wipe the board for you in this situation, which is what Brawl does. Um, if you want an Iron Juggernaut, you would just play a Boulder Fist Ogre. It's got better stats, and generally the mind never blows up anyway, so fuck it. Um, sea Reaver, <clears throat> Unstable Ghoul, um, Whirlwind, Matter Bomber. Gorhal, you could just run Arcanite Reaper, um, or a Reckless Rocketeer. A lot of times Gorhal is just a burst to finish your opponent uh, after you've been turtling for ages. Grom, uh, for for Grom you could run an Arcane Golem, a Raging Warkin, or a Gurubashi Berserker. <clears throat> Both give you some damage while uh, also having the possibility to grow the board. Um, Varian Wern, Cult Master. Anytime your minions die, you get to draw a card. So if you have three minions, you play it for four mana, you draw three cards, you can play more stuff too. So Cult Master at the lower levels is a great card. Um, all right, now we're into neutrals. Let's go. Um, let's see. So Blood Mage Thalnos, I believe it's going to be our first one. Sir Finley, you can't, it's pretty hard to replace Sir Finley. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I would replace Sir Finley. I, I would just replace Sir Finley with like a, I guess an earlier game minion that gives you better tempo so you care less that you have a shitty hero power. Um, yeah. Blood Mage Thalnos, I would replace with a Cobalt Geomancer or even a Loot Hoarder. Either, either, it depends on what end you need. Do you need the cheap spell damage for two mana? Run the Geomancer. Do you need the early game draw card? Run a Loot Hoarder. Um, Nat Pagel. Loot Hoarder. Um, Idis Darkbane. Flame Juggler, Harvest Golem, Ogre Brute, or Mind Control Tech. For Fiola Darkbane, you would run... Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Let's catch up. Okay, Fiola Lightbane. You would run Argent Horse Rider, Ogre Brute, or Mind Control Tech. I think Ogre Brute is just a pretty good replacement for the Sisters. If you can't, if you want to play Druid and you want to play the Sisters, just run Double Ogre Brute. Does some pretty good work. Um, King Mukla again, Ogre Brute uh, for three mana. You only get one one less in stats. See, that's a three mana four four. He's got a pretty shitty ability, but a lot of times you can mitigate his uh, chances to miss. So where are we at? King Mukla would replace with an Ogre Brute. And Hanso Meccano. Where are you at? I would replace my Hanso Meccano with just Defender of Argus's. They give two minions, one one, and taunt, which is actually better than any single ability given by Hanso Meccano. So Defender of Argus is probably just better. Um, Gormok. Dark Iron Dwarf or Implosion, if you're playing Warlock. Uh, Dark Iron Dwarf, I think, is actually a great replacement for Gormok. Because it's, um, it's a 4 mana 4-4 four, four that you don't need 4 minions for. And you get an extra 2 damage out of it instead of an extra 4. So it's like just a slight trade-off. Um, so yeah, Dark Iron Dwarf. Twilight Guardian. Where are we at, Twilight Guardian? Right here. Uh, Sentient Shieldmaster. Sometimes this doesn't go off and it becomes a 2-6, uh, no taunt. Sengen is a 3 5 uh, taunt, so it's a pretty good replacement for that. And you don't need a dragon to activate it. And um, it's guaranteed taunt, so I think Sengen is a pretty decent replacement. Same with, you could also just put a sludge. Sludge! Where are we at? 
All right, Blingtron. Uh, I would replace a Bomb Lobber. Faceless Manipulator. Um, anything that deals with a large minion, whether depends on what class you're playing, but an extra like Polymorph, a Big Game Hunter, an Assassinate, something like that. Um, Harrison Jones, Acidic Swamp Ooze. Where are you at, Indiana Jones? All right, yeah, I would replace Indiana Jones with Acidic Swamp Ooze. Um, Leroy with an Arcane Golem or a Wolf Rider. Lotheb is the best card in the game, and he cannot be replaced. Um, there is no real replacement for him. Nexus Champion, Sarad. Um, a Recruiter or a Stampeding Kodo. A uh, Kodo Rider, even. Um, or a Caldea Raider. I think are good replacements. Um, they still give you that Inspire bonus. Um, yeah. Nexus Champion Sarad's a little kind of meh. I don't I don't know how much I've how much I like him. Uh, let's go. Bull frame shield, any taunt. He would just replace with any taunt. Uh Karn Bloodhoof. Most of these are just like better minions that you would, you know, anyway. Karn Bloodhoof, uh piloted shredder or piloted sky golem if you had the sky golem. Sky golem was actually rated better than Karn Bloodhoof for a while because Piloted Sky Golem can death rattle to a piloted Shredder, which could death rattle into a Haunted Creeper, which is like like just for you know six mana you get like more value than Doctor Boom, which is kind of crazy. Um, if everything goes right, Emperor, there's no replacement for Emperor. Like if you're playing Druid, you could run like Innervates, but you're gonna be running Innervates anyway. Same with Wild Growths. Um, if you're yeah, you just Emperor is hard to replace. You could maybe run like the two drop two two. Your first minion that you play costs a, a one less mana, but I don't, I don't know. Hogger, if you want to replace Hogger, you could run Obsidian Destroyer if you're playing Warrior Sludge Belcher or even Silverhand Knight. Silverhand Knight has the same stats as Hogger and it's one less mana. And usually Hogger dies after the first turn anyway, so Silverhand Knight kind of accomplishes the same thing. Um, but if you need that extra protection, Sludge Belcher, I would say. Gazlo. <clears throat> Replace Gazlo with a um, Gadgets on Auctioneer. Justicar, you could replace. Um, in theory, the best replacement for him is Sir Finley Murgletron. But if you don't have Justicar, you probably don't have Sir Finley. So you would look at what Justicar is doing in your deck that what you need. So if you're playing just a card in like an aggro, aggro paladin, you would look to replace it with like something, like maybe like an Avenging Wrath in order to burst your opponent. If you're playing it in a, a priest, you know, like maybe you replace it with like a heal, even though that's not, like a Holy Fire is a hard replacement for a just a card, but it'll do in a pinch, you know? like And sometimes situationally, it actually is better. Um, so... Sylvanas, um, let's see, where are we at? You could play Mind Control Tech. It's not as good, but it's as close as you're going to get. Um, if you're playing Priest, you could play Cabal Shadow in its place. The Black Knight, you could play uh, Big Game Hunter in its place. The, what's interesting is like Black Knight is the best when it's killing something like an Earth Elemental or a uh, Molten Giant that's been taunted or some sort of giant, giant taunt minion. And then you just Black Knight it and you feel like a beast. Well, you know, Big Game Hunter does the same thing if it's a giant, giant taunted minion, and it's, like, way cheaper. So, Big Game Hunter all day. Um, Toshley, I would replace with uh, Boulder Fist Ogre, or maybe even Venture Co. Mercenary, depending on the situation that you're in. Um, if you really, really need those spare parts, then just play more mech shit. That's it. Um, Baron Geddon, I would replace with an Abomination. Uh, where's Baron getting that? We don't have Baron getting. There's Baron getting. Yeah, I would replace him with an Abomination. Um, Chilmo, I would actually also replace with an Abomination. Both of, bo both of these are great replacements, are Abomination. Um, they just give you the ability to wipe that board. Uh, Dr. Boom, a War Golem. And two wisps. What's up? <laughs> um, just a big game hunter. If you can't, if you can't, if you can't join them, you gotta beat them. 
right? If you can't join him and play Dr. Boom yourself, you have to beat Dr. Boom. And Big Game Hunter is the best card at beating Dr. Boom. So you play a second Dr. Boom to deal with two of their big ass minions or play a Dr. Boom in general. No, I mean, yeah. But I, if you're going to craft a legendary, this should be your first one right here. And eventually he's going to get nerfed or some shit. So you're going to get your money back anyway. Whatevers. Skycap and Crag, lol, who cares? Like, it's a 4 6 charge. It's four, it's 7 mana for 4 fucking damage, which is shit. So, you could replace it with a Reckless Rocketeer or anything. Trogs or the Earthinator, you would replace with Burly Rockjaw Trogs, a Force Tank Max, or a Boulder Fist Ogre. Onward and onward. Ragnaros, Force Tank Max, um. Ragnaros usually can kill something big and live, um, almost guaranteed, where Force Tank Max can like kill something big and also live because of the Divine Shield now. Generally it's not going to work out as good as Ragnaros will, but sometimes Ragnaros is hitting one drops and shit, whereas you can choose where this goes. Um, also if you're like, oh I really want to play Ragnaros so I can play it to burst my opponent, just play a Reckless Rocketeer. It gives you the you know, five damage of charge for six mana. It's not it's, it's reckless Rock tier is not a good card, but it's a good replacement for the mechanism of what the legendary does. Um, yeah. If you wanted a faux reaper, um, and you were playing like let's say you wanted a faux reaper, and you were playing rogue, you could play like betrayal. Otherwise, if you're playing another class, you just want like AOE plus removal. Um, or AoE plus Pyromancer because it kind of gives you the multiple places of damage for, for at one shot. Um, Gruul, Shade of Noxoramus. Um, Sneeds, Piloted Sky Golem is a good replacement for him. Um, for Alex, just a, any big body with Taunt because um, setting yourself... You can't change your hero's life with any other card besides Alex like that. Um, at least off the top of my head. So you're not going to find any kind of remotely close value in that. So then you have to look at the second value. Alex helps you live a lot. So maybe find some large taunt throw or hard to deal with taunt. Throw it in there. Um, Ice Howl. I would just... A Reckless Rocketeer. Can't attack heroes. It's 9 mana for 10 damage. Reckless Rocketeer is 6 mana for 5 damage. So it gives you a pretty good chance to remove a minion. Um, yeah. Malagos. Like, pretty much like Giants and Dragons can really only be replaced with, like, just, like, big-bodied minions. Because they don't, like... You're not going to find a minion that gives you spell damage plus 5. You know? I mean, if you're playing Druid, you could play like a Jungle Moonkin Sorcerer or whatever the fuck that shitty card is, but really, you just need a big body. So, um, you're not going to be able to get the same synergy off of what the ability is from the dragon, but you still will be able to get a big, burly minion that forces your opponent to deal with it. Um, so... Ysera actually is a little bit of an exception, uh, along with Merkjanir Thermoplug. Um, I would replace both of those with Cult Masters. It just gives you a uh, card draw um, or board development off of. It gives you. It, 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 so, if Cult Masters is a good replacement for Merkjanir Thermoplug because it rewards you for trading board. It's a good replacement for Ysera because it gives you draw. Um, while still allowing you to maintain, or while still like attacking your opponent's board and like replacing the minions you lose. So usually when you play a series, you hope for Ysera Awakens, which is deal five damage to all to everyone except for Ysera. Um, so yeah, it's kind of hard to replace it. I would just throw in a big body. Same with like Deathwing, Nosdormu, and Nixia. Like a Kraken is a pretty good replacement for a lot of these big boys. Um, a, cra a North Sea Kraken or just something with Taunt. Kraken can help you push for lethal as well as like clear minions because of its battle cry. And if you're playing something big like a giant or a dragon, uh, a legendary dragon that is, um, 
uh, odds are you're committing your whole turn to it. Or, or yeah, odds are you're committing your whole turn to, to playing this minion. So North Sea Kraken, you get a nine, you know, nine mana, you get a nine seven, and you get to deal four damage wherever you see fit, um, which is a better ability than like Nose Dormu or you know, Deathwing even or you know, well a lot of these minions. So. Roll with some North Sea Krakens. They'll help you snipe some some lethals and some legendary minions. I hope that this guide was interesting for you guys. Um, also, as a side note, I played in the Bacon Infinity last week and got second out of 260. So I was pretty good stuff. Um, Thank you guys so much for checking out this tutorial. I hope it was informative, and I hope you can find some good replacements. If you have any like epic or even rare cards that you need replacements for, post it in the comments below. I will um, do my best to help you out find that replacement to get you that good synergy, to get you those wins. And until next time, um, peace out, my little nerds.